Today we'll be adding skim provisioning to a DScope tenant using Azure AD. We need to have SSO enabled so we can check within authentication methods, SSO service provider. So here we confirm that we have this enabled. We also need to have users already logged in using SSO and associated to that tenant. We also already have the tenant configured with all of the SSO configuration completed. We'll also need an access key associated to that tenant. So we'll go to access keys, create an access key, and we'll associate it to the tenant with the tenant admin role and copy it to the clipboard. The format we'll need to have is project ID colon access key. So I've copied the access key to a file, and then I've copied the project ID from project settings and added the colon. We also already need to have users and groups assigned to the application within Azure. So we'll go down to users and groups and confirm that we have users and groups associated to the application. We'll then configure provisioning within Azure. We'll go to provisioning, click on getting started. We'll switch it to automatic. We're going to update the tenant URL. We'll then copy in our secret token, which is the project ID colon access key. We'll then test the configuration. We'll see a successful test and click save. Before configuring the skim mappings, let's test with the API and check if there's any skim groups currently configured. So we can use our docs, go to try it on search skim groups, update to the bearer token with the project ID colon access key, click send, and here we see no skim groups. Let's start with configuring the group mappings. So we'll expand mappings. We'll click on groups. We support create, update, and delete of groups. And here we can see that it's display name, object ID, and members. So we see this detail here. We can then go back and update the user mappings. So we'll select on users. We'll scroll down here and look at our configuration. Here we see that we support update only. So we'll uncheck create and delete. We'll update the attribute mapping to be user principal name, account enabled, and display name, map to username, active and display name. We'll also delete the unnecessary items. So after we make our changes, this is what we'll see. And we'll click Save. We'll then back out of here. We can then configure the provisioning to run actively. So in your environment, you'll want to click Start Provisioning. So it does automatic provisioning. For this tutorial, we're going to provision on demand. We can now provision our groups. So let's click on Chris Group. And let's provision this group. We see that the group was provisioned successfully. However, it was skipped because the group was already added when the user was added, and there have been no changes to that group. We can then search the skim groups that have been added. So here we can use the search skim groups, and the bearer token is the project ID colon access key. Click send. And here we see that we have three groups that are configured from skim. Let's then load our skim user. So we'll type in their email address. And then we'll load the data for that user. Here we see that it's Chris Carper test is the given name and display name. However, within Azure, it's only Chris Carper. So let's provision another object. Search for Chris, provision this user, click provision. We can then see that the display name is updated. So let's resend this. And it's now updated. So the skim provisioning is now working. To recap this tutorial, we configured skim provisioning with DScope and Azure. We then tested provisioning users and groups within Azure's provisioning. We also used the DScope API to load information about the skim provisioning items.